Good morning, everyone. It is an absolute pleasure to welcome you here today for this amazing session we have. Um, if you will take a moment to please let us know where you're joining us from today in the chat box. And again, welcome. My name is Nicola Corzine. I'm the founding executive director of the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. For those of you who may not know, the NASDAQ Center is a nonprofit dedicated to enabling entrepreneurs from all over the world to realize their maximum potential and grow. So a couple of housekeeping rules before we get started. For the best user experience, we do suggest checking and clicking your view into gallery view. We're going to be opening up for Q&A at the end of the panel. So to, uh, please do include your questions in the Q&A box that you'll see at the bottom of your screen. And of course, just a, a note that we like to call out at the beginning of all of our sessions as a nonprofit, none of this work would be possible for us without the generous support of our amazing sponsors. We're truly humbled by their contributions contributions and deeply grateful for all that they do for us. So one thing to note is during this unique time, we've actually been measuring um, the sentiment of how our entrepreneurs are actually facing um, life and the challenges that are unfolding before them. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll right now um, that we have been doing again for the last eight weeks just to understand how everyone is feeling in this climate with all that's going on. If you could take just a moment to let us know how you're doing today and we will share uh, that poll with you. Um, in just a moment with the results. Um, you know, it's, it's just so you know, we have found over time with the different inflection moments of COVID-19, the pandemic, the stimulus packages that have been available, uncertainty around qualifying for certain aspects of the stimulus packages, that this sentiment has changed understandably over time. Um, so uh, we are, are tracking this as an ongoing basis to better help and inform the wellness and the overall um, survivability of our entrepreneurs. Um, so I have got about an equal blend right now between an understandable amount of anxiety, uh, some of you that are just hanging in there on the surviving front, and, and certainly a good deal of optimism, which we would expect from our amazing entrepreneurs. Um, so let me go ahead and end this and uh, share the results with people so that we can see this. Um, now, of course, in order to better um, support you today, we do like to get just a quick gut check and a sense of who's joining us. Um, so I'm going to launch just a very quick poll to understand who is joining us today. Um, so very simply, just asking you to uh, answer whether or not you're an entrepreneur, an aspiring entrepreneur, the ones that are ready to launch some amazing businesses and solutions in our world, or if you're actually um, uh, in our ecosystem support of entrepreneurs as well, all of which are critically important uh, for the basis of entrepreneurship at large. Great, so we have a pretty nice blend of entrepreneurs and other joining us today. Let me go ahead and end that and share these results. And I've got just one more and then I promise we're gonna get underway with this amazing content on digital transformations today. And the last thing that we wanna understand is honestly, what is keeping you up at night right now? Um, so we are gonna launch that and just ask you to kind of share, is it mainly a concern around finances, sales, marketing, how you scale, uh, perhaps a pivot that is in front of you right now? the growth and capabilities of your team, or honestly, again, just surviving. If you will take just a moment to share these results with us, we deeply appreciate it. Um, and uh, in turn, we will let you know how many of your other entrepreneurs are uh, equally concerned or staying up at night, perhaps worrying about some of these subject matters as well. I take just one or two more seconds to share that finding. Uh, finance is definitely winning today as far as uh, what's top of mind. Um, we do have some people looking at scale and always team. Um, again, we know pretty much for entrepreneurs, nothing's possible without a great team. So not surprising to see some of that. So let me end that poll and share those results with you. Thank you so much for contributing. This really does help us uh, be smarter around the programs that we offer for you and equally how we address some of the challenges that you're all facing right now. So without any further ado, let's get to the topic in front of us. Um, please join me in giving an amazing warm welcome today to our two great experts. We have Tara Nicole Nelson, founder and CEO of SoulTour.com. She is an amazing transformation coach and the author of The Transformational Consumer. We also have Jillian DeFrost, the head of digital transformation transformation, products and customer experience, SME at Bank of the West. Um, again, thrilled to have you guys here today. Uh, and please, uh, I'll invite both of you to take just a moment to introduce a little bit about your background and what you're passionate on. So uh, maybe Tara, can we start with you? Sure, sure. Uh, hi, thanks for having me, Nicola. I'm Tara Nicole Nelson. 
I am a breakthrough coach for entrepreneurs and a transformation strategist for purpose-driven companies. Um, currently, my role is the founder and CEO of SoulTour.com. Um, what we are is a, we're a personal development organization and a coaching company where we teach entrepreneurs how to overcome their inner critic and imposter syndrome and all the hidden ways you hold yourself back without knowing you're doing it. Um, and the very first thing that we teach our clients is a proven daily ritual that recalibrates their nervous system and cultivates inner well-being so that they can succeed in their businesses even at a time like this at the same time as they can feel like they're winning at life and thriving in their lives. Um, so that's who I am and what I, oh, I guess previously I was an entrepreneur in residence at uh, Lightspeed Venture Partners. I was the chief marketer at My Fitness Pal. I led content marketing at Trivia.com and I led digital and content at an agency for venture back startups in San Francisco. Amazing, Tara, thank you so much. Julian, let me invite you to share just a couple of minutes on your impressive background to you. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thanks again for the, for the opportunity uh, to join this, this exciting webinar and uh, of course the digital transformation as the heart of uh, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. So. I'm actually a, a Belgium guy. Uh, I did a back and forth between a, a big corporate, uh, like in banking, but as well as entrepreneur, actually a family business, but as well in a tech company in Europe. Then I moved to, a, to US actually a, one year and a half ago to join Bank of the West and really uh, uh, focusing on uh, how do we help these entrepreneurs uh, and, and it's really going beyond financial. And I think that uh, seeing as well the poor Right now, no, no, no one uh, mentioning surviving. It's a really great, great things because I think, of course, I know that cash flow and everything's like that would be. It's still a key topic that we try to address as well today. But uh, uh, I, I would say, in general, uh, passion uh, for entrepreneurship uh, to help entrepreneur uh, to grow their business and really look at how, how I can mix that that really sense with what I'm doing actually in the bank. So. Uh, Great to have uh, uh, all of you here and uh, and seeing how it goes. Yeah, Julie and Tara, thank you so much. I know today's conversation is going to be incredibly enriching. And again, um, for those of you who have questions, please do put them into the Q and A box. We want to collect them and really make this as engaging and relevant to you as possible. But I do have a few questions that I thought we'd start with. Um, Julian, digital transformation is actually in your job title. Um, so I guess I want to start by opening it up to you and say, how do you even define digital transformation through you know, both your work at the bank and certainly your work as an entrepreneur? Um, what are those business activities or, or business mandates that basically digital transformation require? Um. Yeah, so thanks for the question. Uh, I think that I, I'm, I'm facing a little bit of technical issue actually, so I hope that everyone can hear me. So uh, actually digital transformation, it's it's pretty broad and difficult to, to really define, to be honest. I would say the first thing that I, I, I would really mention, uh, and it's taking like one minute on, about transformation in, in it, the self and it works. I think that transformation is really about uh, ourselves, human being first, even before technology. Uh, we will have a, a lot of different conviction and different definition of what, what, what it is exactly. And I think that it's uh, going to the path would be, uh, would be uh, taking probably the whole webinar. Uh, it's truly really for me a mindset. Uh, it's all the entrepreneurs uh, uh, are looking at their business or they want to reinvent their business all the time or they want to be ahead of uh, what the customer needs. Uh, I think that we are missing uh, really often the point that it's first for our customers that we are doing all, all, all of this. And of course, the employee, I really say that as well, happy employee will be happy customers at the end. So uh, I think in a larger sense, uh, technology will, will play, a, of course, a big role in that, but I think we can always fix technology. Uh, the human being part of this transformation, it's essential and heart of uh, uh, what we should look at and I think that it's the most difficult part to manage as well of course you will have your your staff with you you will be you you will have to look to look forward all the time and anticipate all the time what what the customer needs are um, and I think that is is this time with this pandemic is forcing us to really speed up this this digital transformation and I think it's really a nice opportunity for everyone to to rethink and rethink in a sense of uh, 
how do we make um, a, a even more profitable business and how you pivot it's in some of the cases i mean we we are facing a very diffi difficult and challenging time right now and i'm talking with entrepreneurs every day it's 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 what what they strike them today it's all do we restart or do we make sure that we we get the attention of the customers and how, how do we make the right choices as well i think that especially for small entrepreneur you cannot do everything at once and i think it's a uh, part of my entrepreneur uh, previous life as well i was like all the time how do you manage all your priorities how do you uh, have everything in mind it's it's not only cash flow it's your staff it's marketing it's how do you go to the market or do do you think about your business model and making revenue based on that i really think that it's the overall picture and i think that it's what it's exciting as well because it's a really so broad you're touching everything and and it's a game changer so i really think that no digital transformation and especially as well in the us it's it's uh it's it's really the momentum that we need to keep working on and uh, and take the time to really think about what is the next best steps to do actually to 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 be successful in this transformation love that i, I really appreciate sort of leaning into the idea that it's a mindset that this is very much around the reinvention of a business and an ongoing process too, uh, and very much with that customer mindset in place. So I guess, you know, maybe to go to you for a moment, Tara, you know, both you're a coach, you're an author, and before that, you've been a CMO at My Fitness Pal through the acquisition under, you know, uh, Under Armour. <laughs> um, but I also think in your own words that you've shared in the past, you've always been kind of customer obsessed. Um, so maybe adding on to what Julian kind of said is the framework, what does digital transformation really look like from your perspective through the lens of that customer obsession? You know, and maybe if you don't mind, what are the top two or three things that you would consider critical to really beginning to develop a strategy in this space? Yeah. Um... I, I, I really sort of envision that a thriving, that a th I, I cannot overstate my emphasis on what Julian was talking about in terms of like the human piece of all of this in your company, in your, in your own mind, <laughs> in your own team, in your own audiences, right? So in a thriving business, your relationship with your audience is, an, it's an ongoing thing. It's not a one and done thing, right? It's a, it's a symbiosis. It doesn't matter whether you're B2B, B2C, whether you're talking about serving your internal audiences. As entrepreneurs, we sort of exist <laughs> to help facilitate, to help remove friction and trigger progress along some transformational journey that our audience, our customers want to make. That's why humans engage with businesses is to create some change in some state in their lives or their businesses or their bank accounts or whatever. And their desires to change are also always changing. Their aspirations are always changing. The transformation they need to, to make and are looking to you to help them make are always changing. So in some ways, it's odd that digital transformation even has to be like a discipline <laughs> out here. It kind of is just like the way we should live as an ongoing mindset as entrepreneurs. It's odd that we would even have expected to be able to serve people in a static way. Um, and to Julian's point also, we are just in an unprecedented, a time of unprecedented accelerated transformation. There already was a real transformation wave. I wrote a book called The Transformation Transformational Consumer in 2017, sort of calling the trend that like people are changing a lot and fast <laughs> and it's snowballing and COVID has only made that go faster. Um, the civil rights movement has only made that go faster. So what I, what I think that digital transformation, um, if you can totally just sort of surrender to that wave of change is all there is. I think what digital transformation enables is not is an intentional sort of love affair with your customers where you're constantly, constantly, constantly molding the clay of how you serve them and how you unlock transformation for them in their lives, but also an ongoing longer term love affair with your customers than you could have if you had the sort of one and like, this is the thing that we do <laughs> mindset. So this is about, it's really 
almost purely about meeting your customers where they're at, but knowing that where they're at in this accelerated time of transformation is kind of always changing, right? So you have to kind of change with them. So the things that I think are really critical to developing a powerful uh, digital transformation strategy include like clarity and commitment. You do have to decide that you're going to wholeheartedly engage with the transformation process itself. That's that mindset piece. Um, but you also, have, so there's that commitment to that, but you also have to know with some level of clarity and intentionality what your own North Stars as an organization are. Like what, who is it that you serve? What do you do? What is the engine, what is the core kernel, the engine of transformation for them that you provide? You have to have a, a bit of a, uh, you know, as deep as possible of an understanding of your customer's real world journey their real world transformational journey into their aspirations and where their frictions are and, and how you can trigger progress and how what you do does that. Um, and from there, once you're like clear on that and committed to the process, digital transformation actually is like your superpowers. <laughs> it allows you to rapidly find solutions to basically everything else including you know, how to reach and engage your customers, but also how to serve them, how to uh, streamline processes within your business, automate things, and potentially cut costs if that's what you need, potentially um, discover where the sort of hidden high ROI um, pieces of your business may be. So it's, it's really all about rapid iteration of how you're engaging with your customer all along their journey. Amazing. Well, I, I think um, IDC has actually predicted that uh, by 2020, so actually here we are, 30% of the global 2000 companies are actually going to have dedicated 10% of their overall spend uh, in capital budget to uh, fueling their digital strategies. Um, Certainly that's not an inconsequential amount when you're a global 2000 company. But I think equally, you know, for our early stage entrepreneurs trying to figure out from a financial investment perspective, what should they be thinking through? And honestly, you know, for pre-revenue companies, it, it, absent large amounts of capital coming their way, what activities could they be applying today that maybe don't have that kind of significant initial investment outlay to support this type of activity affecting their businesses for the positive statement that you've both been sharing? So open question to both of you, uh, whoever wants to answer first, but would love to get your thoughts on, on the investment strategy here. Go for it, Julian. So no, you, you can take that one first, no problem. Sure. Um, I know that in a time like this, it's easy to think that you can't, you just be like, I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford it, I can't afford it, I can't afford it. But my experience has been that sort of the earlier the startup, the scrappier the startup, the more tech debt there can be as we all sort of dive in in this lean way and we just start, you know, we just started doing our businesses and just started seeing what was working and getting customer feedback. Um, that means that at a time like this, there actually are some potentially um, very useful, maybe even survival level um, advantages to using technology and digital to prioritize your, like honestly, to prioritize your cash, to prioritize, you know, the, the part, the models and products and offerings that you sell and, and have that are, um, that are or are not working, even your marketing strategies that are or are not working. So sometimes it's, uh, the temptation is to go, like, I can't afford to do it. In some ways, you really cannot afford not to be paying attention um, to digital transformation uh, investments at this time. Although, like I said, for the earlier stage of the company, it's almost like not even digital transformation. It's like building, it's building the business. Um, I worked at Trulia.com in 2008. So I worked at a real estate search engine <laughs> in the midst of the real estate crisis um, under Pete Flint, who is now running um, NFX, which is a venture fund in San Francisco. But Pete had just had, uh, he's from Europe also, he had just had a travel company. He had a tr travel technology company during 9-11. He comes to the US, <laughs> starts a real estate company, then 2008 hits, right? 
So I've actually had the advantage of working in a situation where there was a lot of wisdom about what to do in a crisis and, and transformations to do in a crisis. And I like that he has this kind of rubric that if you want to thrive in a downturn, you kind of have to deal with three things. You've got to manage your losses. You've got to focus on gaining ground and you've got to focus on managing your own psychology. Um, and so in the digital, trans digital transformation, when it comes to managing losses and just like, reorienting, understanding what is and isn't working in your marketing and reach and engagement, um, becoming sort of the, the sovereign of your own uh, marketing relationships with your customers. Digital transformation can help you do that in ways that pretty much nothing else can. And in terms of gaining ground, like understanding the consumer changes, understanding behavior changes, understanding industry changes. There's just a level of listening and analytics that only digital can offer you. Um, and from there, it's like all about the psychology sometimes of killing your darlings, <laughs> the projects you love that aren't performing. Um, and also digital transformation helps you know what, you know, what to prioritize. So I think that, um, but I, I don't even see it as like a separate necessarily investment for digital transformation. It's just part of thriving in your business in a downturn. So helpful. Julian, anything you'd add there? Yeah, so so I completely agree. And, and piggyback on what just Tara said, I think that uh, it's, it doesn't really deserve a specific budget because I think it's part of your daily business life as entrepreneur. I think you need to think that way. Like we said just before, I think it's really a mindset. Uh, of course, searching for, 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 for investment, uh, these fees, things like that, especially when you are early stage of entre on, on, you know, your entrepreneur life, it's always a kind of a, a big uh, a journey to get there. Uh, and I think that it's uh, uh, US in a larger sense since a couple of years is really one of the, the leader in that way, I think. so. Uh, to be honest, if I remember correctly, in 2005, when we launched this, this uh, concept about uh, uh, live streaming for sport, even in Europe, a uh, great idea with a couple of university uh, uh, friends, we, we had the same thing. It's how do we get this funding? Uh, how are we obsessing about that? Even, even before thinking about what is the real product and what, what is the real need. So I think we, we, we should really balance between or you design your product, or you design your the real needs or what we try to solve actually with, with this investment. I think that it's really a key topic. We all know that, but uh, uh, I think it's, and, and especially when you have this mindset of uh, all you invent yourself and think about uh, what's next for, for, for your customers, I really think that it's, it's a combination of both. So uh, I think it as well using social media, especially now, even that before, uh, be be aware, uh, uh, stay aware. I think it's listening uh, all the time. It, it's it's a key uh, a, a key I would say uh, behavior because it's it will enable you as well to be uh, 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 all the time upfront of what you need. And I truly believe as well that uh, uh, at that time. And I think that if I had to restart now in a new business, I would do the same thing. It's being obsessed of being all all the time with with all events that you can do. Talk to people, uh, uh, talk about your passion, talk about your, your project, and it's the only way really to, to, to be successful. I think that it's, it's, it, it's payoff at the end. I know a couple of stories when, when people were really pushing and pushing for two, three years, and at one moment, because you are so uh, customer obsessed, but as well uh, because you truly believe in what you do, and I think entrepreneurs it's probably one of the first skills that they have, you need to go for it. Don't dare to do it and really don't 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 give up and any time. I, I really think that you can even starting from one ID and going to another ID was completely different. That's what the mindset is. It's really adapt yourself in versatility and agility in this world. I think it's 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 valid for any companies as a small one and, and sort of as a big company. So sage, sage advice. And um, you know, in some ways speaking of uh handling adversity, uh, it is uh, probably a very light statement to say that for most of our businesses, COVID-19 has thrown them more than one or two curveballs and their ability to sort of reevaluate their core offerings, the delivery of those offerings, even what their business model is gonna look like and who they're serving um, has certainly gone through a lot of changes, uh, digital transformations in this time. And certainly, you know, 
some industries have been affected even more heavily than others. I think of education, food services, live events is just a few examples of that. Um, but Julian, you know, in your role at the bank and also in helping entrepreneurs, as, as I know you do and spend a lot of your time thinking about, how do you approach, approach digital transformation really as it relates to helping think through the business model or even really deepening the value of existing ones if they can stay the course? Uh, can you maybe explain or break down for us a little bit more in granularity that intersectionality of digital transformation and business models and really how revenue can be unlocked when you look through that X, Y axis differently? Yeah, I think a great question. And I mean, it's a, a really large question as well to answer in a couple of minutes. But uh, I think digital and transformation in, in a larger sense affect the core businesses of your core businesses all the time and open new frontiers as well. Uh, and require fundamental change all the time. Like we said, it's really uh, uh, this adaptation to, uh, to the current situation. And it's especially when you have a crisis like this, it's the right moment to rethink all, all your business and the way that you go to the market. So I, I really think that uh, by, uh, by experience as well between being a very small entrepreneur with no fund and working in a, a big corporate like, uh, like I do today, or bring, bring us to uh, rethink as well the, the business model in a larger sense. And I really think that actually uh, rethinking your business model is part of your overall uh, transformation uh, journey. Uh, you, for, for me, having a model uh, in, in one sense and especially a revenue-based model where we, we and, and actually I can share as well some of the chichi that I had to, uh, to, to manage that all the time with a check, checking list and, and, and really re reviewing almost as an, as an obsession, reviewing that almost every day at one moment. Of course, when your business is launching, it's, 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 it's different and you, you don't have so much time again to cut back to your, to your checking list. But uh, I truly believe that uh, uh, re rethinking the way that we interact with customers, it's, it's, it's a key one uh, for everyone, actually. Uh, this crisis will force us to change. Uh, and I think that uh, for some people who are not convinced, now it's the time. Uh, and so when you really think about your overall uh, business model and, 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 and in your transformation plan, I think it's this both axes are crossing the road. And, and uh, actually, if you don't rethink your business model before you get into a more transformation, coaching your staff and, 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 and defining really the, the overall go to market, that would be a, a difficult, um, I would say, uh, go forward. And you might miss some of the challenging steps that needs to be uh, to be done in, in in the way that you are looking at your model so um and to answer your questions about how i can break down and this intersection between a, a transformation and business model for me like i said it's a uh, uh, it's part of the the overall uh, plan that you have i cannot dissociate that i cannot saying that you can do one thing and the other uh, no it should be down in parallel uh and uh, the really the real uh, the real uh, I would say objective of, of this exercise as well is how do you make a, uh, uh, your cost to sell and cost to serve uh, as more as profitable as possible. And I think that this, this is really the axis and the objective that you need to look at when you, you think about your business model for profitability. Uh, and and, and you, you go from there. And of course, you, re, you need to review. I think this, this, this lean startup approach, it's key in this, this concept because it's really about how you review your, your business case actually. Uh, all the time. It's not a one shot that you do at the start. It's a, it's an obsession. Uh, for me, actually, as an entrepreneur, it was an obsession all the time. We really looking at how we we review that, how we discuss that with partner outside, external partner as well. I think it's really good to get some in, insight from 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 others, from your peers. Uh, I was like spending so much time in, in community, and uh, and and that's that's the way to to to, to move forward. Because you can, you, you can have not one single answer to that question. Everyone has his own personality and, and way of thinking about that. So and, and it's truly a passion. Uh, as you can see, I could talk about hours <laughs> on this. Uh, and, and I'm happy to really deep dive on, on if some people on, uh, on, on this webinar have more, more questions on that. Happy to connect on LinkedIn and, and talk about that. So. That's awesome. Well, and you know, we're big fans of community, obviously, in all that we do here. And so I guess maybe staying with that theme of community for a moment and learning what is working for others, um, would love to throw a question to you both. Who do you admire currently in the past, doesn't really matter, um, that you think have really done a great job of maybe moving from this analog to digital world? Um, and, and really, what were the 
a couple of things that stood out as like why they really were an example in your mind of, of being a great leader um, in this cause. Um, either of you feel free to jump in with a, with a great example that we can look at as a live case. That would be great. We're talking about like a company Yes, like a company or an individual, Tara, certainly if there's an if there's an individual founder that you've seen kind of like you were sharing with Trulia, the, 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 the mindset of sort of shifting over from one experience to another. And certainly for both of you, you believe in the longevity approach of like maximizing learning from one experience to another. So individual or company wise. Yeah, I have one that I have one. Um, it's almost like an industry and a company. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I work in transformation for 20 years and I've, I started much of my career, uh, I've worked in like health and fitness, um, as an industry, which is interesting because it has so transformed in the last 20 years and in the micro, like very obviously, right. What it is about is individual people and the transformation they want to have. So I, I was, in the business when the way that you, I, I put myself through school as a personal trainer. <laughs> so I was in the business when the way that you helped people change what they ate was by giving them a notebook and telling them to write down everything they ate. <laughs> and then I was in the business when my fitness pal, a couple of guys who were super, super, super focused on just, you know, helping people live health, making it easier for people to live healthier lives. And they're, innovations, they're, they're going from, we're just a calorie tracking log, you know, just really, we're just making the analog exactly, the exact analog to the analog, right? Um, to really customer focused, really dialed in listening that, that opened up for them things like, oh, hey, people, a lot of what people eat today is, has, is packaged. Right? Maybe it's, how can we remove a friction from logging that? Oh, we could give them a barcode scanner, right? Like these little small things. And then we've continued to see, I think one of the things that's accelerating right now is we've continued to see, you know, fitness is one of the businesses that has stayed the most analog because it's literally people's bodies have to be in a room, <laughs> right? Like your body has to be in a place and doing a thing. And so it, it has been very fascinating to watch the journey of Peloton in this space where they still, they sort of have very well, they've done a very good job of um, not just being like online when people had to be at home, which they did that too, um, but they have done a very good job of melding the very human, very analog experience of your body in a place doing a thing of having their instructor's bodies in a place where there's a real human person that you get to know and there's this wide array of personalities and, and motivational styles um, and reaching that into people's homes and using digital uh, for all the dashboard and behavior change purposes, but also for like human to human connection. And some of that that they've done very well to, to Julian's earlier point is actually not even about the bike or about the interface. It's about like some of the, the tribe stuff that they facilitate, um, you know, like think of what a cycling group, an actual Peloton, like that's what Pel the word Peloton means is a group of cyclists, right? So a Peloton used to be a bunch of people on the road. Um, now there are Peloton group, Facebook groups of for every, I mean, there's Peloton dads, there's, I'm in the black girl magic <laughs> Peloton group. There's all these different groups. And some of the investment the company has made is not, um, like the CEO of Peloton just came on and did a live with the Black Girl Magic group of Peloton writers, right? They are reaching directly in, in a very human, very analog way to these tribes that aren't even like built on their, in, within their digital platform, but, you know, have connected in this new way that we connect. And so I appreciate that sort of process. They're one of those companies that just had this both very integrated human and digital mindset. And it's just how they kind of do everything. And it obviously has paid off really well in a time when people- Yeah, yeah. That's a fascinating example. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Julian, who inspires you? Who would you share as a great example? Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, yeah, a lot of people could inspire you actually from a very big corp, uh, especially in the US, in the Bay Area, who, who developed uh, really 
beautiful concept in a, and very profitable business or even more than that. Actually, I was obsessed in 2008 with the family business with e-commerce. At that moment, it was a really big thing. So I, I, I think turning into the e-commerce platform and uh, having like, uh, like the sense of the customer experience like uh, at the heart of everything you do was the revolution uh, for me. So I would take maybe one example. I see a lot of examples coming out as well, actually, in the US. Uh, it's called Doc, Doc, Dr. Lee, uh, this crazy doctor that I met actually in 2011 or 2012 uh, in, in France actually has a great idea. It's really to digitize the doctor appointment. Uh, and it's really fascinating. Nobody was believing that. Nobody. I don't know how many of you are using now a doctor on demand or Health United, et cetera, or where you can have all this full digital experience. It was really, like a, for me, uh, a kind of small revolution in this transformation because people start to dare to go into a specific space. And when we talk about healthcare, actually, it's really a specific space. You need to be an expert. You cannot talk about that like you, you talk about uh, 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 more common things like a, a payment that everyone is doing every day on a consumer base. But of course, if you, you, you need to be an expert. And you had this crazy idea to launch uh, a full uh, uh, yeah, e-commerce platform for doctors, himself being a doctor as well. And actually, uh, it was not that successful at the, at the start, to be honest. Very difficult to unroll as well some uh, other doctor. And actually, finally, being a very good example of uh, uh, what has been copy past, I think, to be honest, need to be verified, but copy pasting here in the US. So, uh, and actually, most of the people know using that won't go away from, from, from that example. So it truly really inspired me because he had so many uh, hurdles and blockers in front of him, but he never stopped, he never gave up. And, and especially when you are a doctor or you give up your, your, all your work, etc., to to build this uh, in a larger sense was for me very inspiring. So mm. of the many examples actually that some everyone can take, but uh, that inspired me a lot. We'll have to come up with like some Miro leaderboard on like all of the amazing people and in industries. As you guys were both sharing, I was thinking of how many others I would I would add to like a short list. It's it's really pretty inspiring to look through the lens of digital transformation and realize what it empowers both everyone from the individual to teams to organizations to industries to really do as a result. Um, Okay, so Tara, I'm going to come back to the customer centricity just for a second. You know, in in your mind, is digital transformation truly in its purest form really a customer growth strategy? Like, like if used for good, does it help you acquire more customers? And and if so, maybe from your experience, you could help us think through, you know, how we learn to leverage technology to really ensure that customer growth is happening for our early stage entrepreneurs. I mean, so my, you know, I was a marketer and I get the our obsession <laughs> with customer growth. I do think that, um, I do believe that done well, digital transformation should help you grow customers. Yes. It is also my thesis that focusing on growth without focusing on engaging them over and over and over and over and over again over time is a little bit like pouring champagne down the bathtub, <laughs> just like down the drain, you know, so you're getting, you're putting all this effort in. And I do see early stage entrepreneurs do that because you can only, it is true, you, you can't, it's very difficult to focus on all of the things all of the time. So I'm a big advocate that the KPI we should really be focused on is growth of engaged customers versus like just customer growth. Um, and I think that should be the, the, that should be almost be like the overall KPI. Like it should be the company KPIs should be like revenue and growth of engaged, repeat, referring customers. So one framework that I love and have taught a lot in the past is the idea of the love mark, right? That there are actually brands and companies whose customers are loyal um, and buy in a repeat way and refer in a way that makes their lifetime value as a customer maybe even greater than you could ever measure um, beyond all proportion to just the value of the product to their lives, right? You think about brands that are just beloved, like, like Peloton, like Patagonia, like some of these brands. And those, those uh, relationships, those are the relationships you really do want to have because 
um, they just, again, customer lifetime value becomes really important. It becomes important to not have to pay to acquire every single customer over time. That relationship with a customer happens because you're, give, you're creating um, you know, magical or surprisingly delightful experiences for them in ways that make their lives easier. So like at this time in my own business, I'm constant, I'm asking my team and my vendors the question of like, how, how can we take, how can we take the products that we know that we have that are in our minds, we think they're best in class. <laughs> how can we make them 10 times better now, even during this time, right? How do we create those surprising, delightful experiences um, usually without acquiring, without, you know, bringing on new team and new salaries and stuff. So that's where I do feel like digital transformation, digital listening, online listening, even online listening, even in an analog way, but especially um, analytics and, uh, pro and recreate again, recreating the business model to meet where people are now kind of on a rolling and ongoing basis to the extent that you can. Where can you be nimble? Where can the content that you're delivering meet them? Kind of like what you were doing at the beginning of this, where you're like, I'm going to take this poll and find out where people actually are <laughs> so we can make sure that what we're delivering to them is, is useful to them and, and helpful to them at, at this time. I do think that digital transformation strategy done very, very well helps grow engaged customers and engaged audiences by you know allowing you, empowering you to provide beautiful and delightful and sometimes even surprisingly delightful experience to them. And it doesn't have to mean that it's some, you know, it, that does not have to be a totally new innovation technologically. I think the, the willing mindset really helps with this. One, one thing that I was thinking about today is, you know, because some of us just aren't in businesses where it feels like delight <laughs> is our stuck in trade, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? I was doing, I was doing my, um, my farm box, my, my farm CSA box, right? I have these vegetables and stuff delivered every week. And I was just thinking about like why I chose that CSA over the others. And it's because they have this little, not honestly, not slick, but they have an interface that allows me to go on every week, see what's going to be in the box and change it. And most don't. Right. And so I just was like, just that little thing is actually very delightful to me because it means I don't throw away as much food. I mean, you know what I mean? Um, so really just that that level of listening and even very seemingly small investments that demonstrate your commitment to delighting your customers um, do grow and engage. And that's the name of the game. Ugh, I love that. I love the idea of a super KPI really focusing on you know, <laughs> the engagement of customers and, and growth of customers, from, but more from the lens of engagement. It's it's just, it changes the entire frame when you look at it through that. Um, and, and it really allows, I think, where entrepreneurs do a beautiful job of looking and trying to really find the the unique changes that shift, the small shifts that can be made, as Julian was saying, almost on an instant basis, where you're looking at the right indicators then, and you're not just looking at, you know, an increase in growth without really a rationale understanding as to the why or whether or not they're going to be with you tomorrow, six months from now and a year from now. So fascinating. Thank you, Tara. Um, I, we've talked a lot about business change and, and I think obviously for pretty much everyone here, it's got to be about business change, but there, there's also an element to what we're talking about, I would think, that really hits more of a cultural change inside of the company. And especially when we really look at, you know, for our early stage growing businesses, those that do a lot of agile testing, how the process of digital transformation might actually be to help us improve our own internal operations or even, you know, increase, just like Tara was saying, the customer value at large. Um, and maybe perhaps if we do it right, this could be a bit of a competitive advantage. Of course, I also recognize as we've spent a lot of time talking about, we can't do all things well at all times. So kind of a, a bit of a question back to you guys. A, do you think that it can actually have that kind of yield where it's improving operational and internal efficiencies and recognitions? And B, is that even realistic for entrepreneurs to try to tackle that right now in this time and in this market? Both of you, Julian, uh, do you want to start well, with I can, that? I can start. I think it's an interesting question to be honest. It's uh, uh, not, not easy to answer. We depend on which kind of business you are as well as an entrepreneur 
truly believe that culture is it's essential. Uh, for me, soft skills and the way that you act and behave uh, with your employee, like I said, happy employee would be happy customers at the end. It's really giving the, the trend on how you, you, you drive your, your own business because the culture that you uh, implement in your business will, will have an impact on everyone, on employees, but as well on customers. So uh, I, I, I'm a really big fan of uh, uh, tackling that because I really think that I don't remember who, who the quote is, from who the quote is, but culture is eating strategy for breakfast. We, we say that a lot, I think, in, in the US. Uh, and that's true. That's totally true. You you can be completely burned by by uh, by if you don't change the culture and and if it, it's a long long journey, right? Uh, I truly believe that uh, being part of a corporate uh, organization, uh, the culture it's a big thing. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, every day I would say, but it should be part of your 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 own business model. That's my really pure conviction. Transformation is based on human being, like we said. If you don't tackle that, if you don't inspire your own staff, it will be very difficult to be successful at the end. Because you need people. You can, for, of course, for so small prop or consultant things like that, it's it's easier because you manage yourself. I don't say that it's easier, but you manage yourself, so it's different. But uh, starting to have a, a team, work, that's where you start the the, ch the big challenge. And I think that uh, if you look at statistic. One of the biggest failure in, in, in a small business and an entrepreneur is staffing. You need the right people with you to be successful. If you don't do that right right now at the start of your, your business, you will fail. You will fail anyway at one moment. Maybe not immediately, but on one, one day you will, you will fail. So uh, we have as well other example of uh, uh, two leaders who have a brilliant ID who doesn't have any soft skills. I won't, I won't mention it, but there is like very top 10, 15 companies in the US uh, well, I, I think that if one in mind with, with, with just nothing that I would like to work with, but again, he's successful. Uh, so I think that because he recruits the, right, the right people and because he develops his own business with the right people. So cultural change in this environment, it's key. Uh, I would add to that as well, test and learn, test and learn all the time. It's an obsession. You need to learn from others. You need to learn from your customers. I think that at every level, you need to develop your own user lab. I think it was a small revolution as well in financial a couple of years ago. User lab, I think some, some of them are really good at that. And, and, and it's re really where all you, you gain. You gain on your trust of your customers and, and all you make it easy as well because you get this feedback. It's constant feedback loop from an agile uh, process. We gain, we gain as well in, into uh, finalizing and, and really fine tuning your, your product or what we try to solve for, for, for the people. So I think it's, it's really a key, key topic for, from my point of view, it's really essential. Fantastic. Tara, obviously you spend a lot of time working with leaders and I have a feeling probably more often than not, they worry about how they can be a good leader to an organization. How often do you find digital transformation is part of really what they're getting at in some way, shape or form? You know, it's, it, it is almost, it's, it's funny because I feel like we keep giving you the same, I'm trying, I'm trying to not give you the same answer. <laughs> it's okay. Feel free but, to keep banging it on the head if it's an important point. I mean, I, I think there's yeah, a certain that's the thing because there really is only one thing, <laughs> right? Especially if you're like an early stage and or pre-revenue, your mindset is kind of that's, I just saw someone phrase it so beautifully that like the culture of a startup is equals the same thing <laughs> as the mindset of its founder, right? Especially when the founder is like still there, still in the building and like very, very early stage. So one thing I um, experienced that I share with my clients and leaders a lot right now is that I was, I was, before I was in tech, I was actually a real estate broker and attorney during the real estate crisis. That was part of like the time, but that was part of the transformation that happened in my life at that time. Um, and I realized at that time, it was such a fascinating case study to see how different people in different organizations um, responded to that very real, very global crisis. And I was sharing this with Julian the other day that I realized in that time, my takeaways were every crisis is a portal for transformation. And there are people and companies who thrive during every crisis period. There just are. <laughs> so my, I kind of made it 
back to that, my personal mission to be one of those who thrives and to study like what differentiates those who do from those who don't. And what I came away with was really, it's, you know, we think that it's all about like finding the right strategy and the exact right, the right answers to our digital transformation question. My opinion is that basically about 20% of whether you or your company or your team is one who thrives coming during this time, only about 20% of that is actually about the very specific answer to the questions that you come up with or the specific strategy that you land on. 80 per, the other 80% is about your mindset, is about how willing you are to be flexible and like, I joke about having Buddhist detachment, <laughs> just be detached from the how, right? Be detached from what, because you really don't, to the test and learn point, to the lean methodology point, you don't know what will work until you put it out there <laughs> at this time. And what works now may not work in six months. In my business, for sure, things change that rapidly, right? So 80% of whether your whether you're digital transformation or any other kind of transformation in your business or your business in general, 80% of whether that's going to you know, have a great outcome at the end of this is about that mindset. So when I think about like the relationship between mindset and digital transformation, I think the way you do one thing is kind of the way you do everything. So the way you do your digital transformation from a mindset perspective probably is the same way you're approaching a lot of other things. So it's like a wonderful moment in time to like dive in, sort of surrender to that. That's what business is now. And, and then you get to, you know, look for the strategy. It gets to be in it actually kind of the fun adventure. It is actually the adventure of entrepreneurship. <laughs> it's like, that's what I love. It's like, okay, all right. So we know this works and this didn't, and this worked and this didn't. Let's string those together and try this thing. And then like, be willing to change it because the transformation we create for our customers is ultimately our North Star. So we do what works for that. And then we use digital transformation to optimize how we deliver that, how we reach them, how we streamline, how we cut costs, how we prioritize. Amazing. I love the idea of kind of making your own adventure with this as a critical tool and doing that well. Um, so we are about to transition into q and I've got some questions that have been teed up by our audience today that we're going to get to. Um, but before we do that, and please, if those, if anyone has anything else that hasn't been raised, go ahead and pop that into the Q&A box and we will try to address those as much as possible. But we always have a rule here that we'd like to make sure that we end on a final question of saying, what's the one key takeaway? And I feel like I know what it's going to be just because we've, <laughs> we've, been, we've been down this path for the last uh, 50 minutes or so. But I'm going to be pedantic and I'm going to ask it explicitly again. Tara, Julian, what is the one takeaway that both of you want us to be thinking about from this session today? I feel like we should just sing it together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like the, the imprecise percentage, like 20% is strategy, 20% of your success is strategy, 80% is mindset. And, yes. and it's just, it's the transformation, the digital transformation piece equals the same as your business <laughs> right now. It's not just a little tiny thing out here. It's, it's how you survive, how you serve. It is the whole, love that. Julian, I'm, I'm guessing you're gonna to wanna to echo to a certain degree exactly what Tara said, but I'm still gonna ask you explicitly, what is your one takeaway that you want us to really uh, be thinking of as we leave today and really try to embrace a more comprehensive digital transformation strategy as leaders of businesses? Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and I think that we, we are in a time where, where it's, it's making so much sense actually. So my, my really takeaway right now would be uh, an, an advice is really to look at who, who is around you, uh, help each other, and really looking at uh, how, how people can help you to get to, to the next level. I think technology is an enabler. Like I said, you can fix it. You can, of course, you need it. You need some investment as well in that space, but I truly believe that uh, investing in people would be much more uh, uh, beneficial for your business and as well uh, to your customers. Don't forget them. Uh, I think that, like, like I just mentioned, uh, having a user lab and a way of systematically uh, going to, a, to, to your customer prospect and asking for, for feedback would be, would be a, even more, even a, a bigger topic today because it's changing so fast. It's the pace of change. It's, it's um, unbelievable. 
that it's even sometimes very difficult to, to, to keep business alive. So I truly believe that some, some of your hours should be really be focused on that more than ever right now because the behavior is changing. So. Very helpful, very helpful. Okay, so we have three questions that have actually been raised both prior to coming into this webinar and then again on this webinar. So we know we wanna hit these three really briefly if we can. Um, the first one is, really being asked around, does your digital company or enterprise really rely on external technology services? And then more worrisomely for our entrepreneurs, how do they know if they're making the right choice? Um, so what can you do from like a Tara or Julian recommendation perspective on thinking through different external technology services that support digital transformation and helping entrepreneurs feel confident that they're making the right decisions around these choices? Yeah, I can share because we're doing this in my company right now. We're a very small company. We're built on a lot of SaaS platforms, very little technology internal. And, uh, and we've taken it, up, it upon ourselves in this moment to optimize that infrastructure. And I will tell you, I was like, I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. I don't have time for that. And it was wild when I just decided this is what we got to do. Um, the... I can't even emphasize the enough the value of having other people, either other entrepreneurs in your space or vendors who work with other entrepreneurs and companies in your space who can literally just walk in and be like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, no, no, no. We found so many overlapping, so many uh, platforms we didn't need like because I was underutilizing one mega one <laughs> that I was paying for. Um, so it turned out to be very valuable for us. And I, I don't think without the power of community um, and having other people who have worked on businesses in our space, in our own personal ecosystem, that was very major for us. Uh, that's a great idea. And continuing to get smarter on other people's learnings and building up that support ecosystem that both of you have been reminding us of today. Thank you. Um, the next question, just from like a timing perspective, when I get to these three is really an approach to experimentation. You both used like test and learn as an example. Any couple of real specific tactical ideas that you can offer entrepreneurs on what is your approach to experimentation in digital transformation mode? Julian, do you want to maybe start there? Yeah, and, and I remember, remember when we we had this concept on the on tech side, I think that mo the most relevant uh, things to do is really uh, get into a, a small, uh, a minimal viable or flowable product. I don't care about the name actually, but it's really how you test quickly your frames, your, your, your ID with customers, even on a sheet of paper. I remember that we, we pitch on the sheet of paper. But sometimes you don't need technology again to really experiment that, that, that concept. And then it enable you to get this feedback and quickly pivot in, into the, the sense of where, where do we really need to solve this issue? Most of the time we are convinced that we know our customers. And I mean, I'm the first one to say that as, as a financial institution and you don't, I mean, you need constantly to get into the, their, their feedback and who bigger you are or difficult it is. So who small you are probably who better it is and who more people will be keen to listen to you as well. So I, I really my advice is to develop this culture in your company. Love that. Okay, last question, and it's a favorite one. I, I um, I'm always curious to learn by great leaders like both of you on this one too. There is quite literally only one thing that will never change in our world: the fact that we have 24 hours in every day. And so, for founders that are trying to prioritize their time efficiently and effectively to really lead with digital transformation, what strategy, what thoughts might you have on really how to optimize time management in general for our early stage founders? Any sort of words of wisdom that you can close this out on today? I mean, I'm big on a, doing a morning ritual of some sort, like whether it's meditation or journaling or you know, a workout or something to get yourself in that sort of inner well-being space so that you can be more efficient with the time that you have. And I also find it just helps clear your mind so you're not spending a lot of time you know, thinking about yesterday <laughs> or worrying about tomorrow, it just kind of brings you into the present. That's probably my number one tip and I have a hundred million. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Julian, what's your number one tip on time management? What do you, yeah, what do you think? Yeah, as we have, as we have many uh, kind of different live in the life when you are entrepreneur as your private life as well, I think, like I said, my cheese what to have a, a checking list with me on the time. 
uh, getting the, to to the structure and to have this ritual every day was last was was my my really well being uh, to develop my my own business. And then I feel good when I review it, just checking and said, okay, this is the things that I need to do. Sometimes putting a lot of pressure, but taking day by day anyway, a small entrepreneur at early stage are taking day by day. Uh, and that's the challenge. So I think getting a structure and don't go uh, too far away in, in what you need to be, what needs to be done. It's, it's, uh, it's the, one of the, my key success factors that I can share. Uh, well, Julian and Tara, honestly, this has been, um truly inspiring, actionable. I can't wait to apply this internally for the NASDAQ Center moving forward. And equally, I know all of our entrepreneurs today are so grateful for your words of wisdom, your insights, and your thoughts. Um, thank you to all of you who have joined us. Uh, we can't uh, wait to hear your feedback. There's a link in that chat box, as Julian just said, help us get smarter by knowing what worked today and what more you need. Please take just a moment or two um, to share what else is top of mind so that we can continue to really bring agile programming uh, in support of the amazing work that you're all doing for our communities and globe. And uh, finally, just a, a couple of quick notes. We've got some great uh, classes coming up that I hope you'll be able to join us for. Uh, first is on June 30th with our PPP forgiveness. Um, we do have yet more answers in the never ending movement on that field. So we hope you'll join us or share with entrepreneurs who may benefit and value that. That's with uh, Bank of the West, Wilson, Cincinnati and KPMG. So we've got an amazing team of experts around to really guide us through that very challenging landscape. Uh, and uh, again, thank you so much for joining us here today. And we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.